Hello, 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 everybody, and welcome to Calypso Cigar Review Podcast. I am Brandon Luna. I'm Randy Rankin. And today we are at not the Calypso Cigar Shop and Lounge. Where are we, Randy? We are at Enfuego in Rockwall, Texas, one Mm -hmm. of my favorite stores. Yeah, it's a great store. Great store. uh, Thank you to Lee for letting us do this. And if you haven't been to Rockwall and if you're in the Dallas area, come check it out. It's a really nice area. It's really beautiful. When you cross that bridge, it's like you're almost going into Italy or something. There's like buildings on the side. Yeah, oh, absolutely. And it's got a beautiful lake. and. uh, they do concerts in, on the lake, and they let you smoke cigars at the at the what? concerts. It's awesome. Yes. What? Yeah, the first time I ever went to the store, I went to a concert on the lake, and uh, I thought, oh, shit, there's a cigar store. Let's go get a cigar. So that no was my shit. first trip. My you first can actually trip. smoke somewhere. Exactly. That's go crazy. Figure. That's exactly. crazy. Go figure. So today we're doing something that uh, Lee actually gave us. It's the uh, Perdomo Small Batch 2005. Yes. We Thank haven't done a Perdomo Lee. in a long time. We haven't. Time. It's been a long time. So this uses some uh, 10-year-old tobaccos. Uh, all Nicaraguan, Nicaraguan sun-grown, Nicaraguan binder and filler, so it's a Puro. Mm-hmm. And uh, it's got a really cool, I love the Perdomo band, man. The oh, Perdomo yeah, band the is Perdomo's beautiful. Great. They do good it's stuff. got that cool small batch, makes it look all exclusive and cool, which everybody loves. So mm-hmm. you got the two band going on, so for the two band snobs, this is one you'd want to try. Yes. And this is inexpensive, it's a $5 smoke. Yeah. Not, Can't go wrong. I'm looking forward to this. this yeah, we're looking at like a, I guess, it's a short bellicoso. A short bellicoso, there you go. Yes. So yeah, this is uh, new for us, and uh, we always yeah. like new. Four ninety nine. Four ninety nine, you wow. can't beat it. And the cold draw on this, I haven't done the cold draw. It's really, it's got some sweetness to it. It's almost mm-hmm. like a. You know, it's funny we weren't going to be reviewing cigars anymore, and yet yeah, that's we're all doing. we've done. Well, when someone gives us <laughs> cigars, I think you if know, if we're given a cigar, we're going to review. Yeah, it. we got Absolutely. Nat Sherman next week. The rep's coming in. He's going to give us cigars. Cool. We'll review we'll that. Yeah. But then when we're on our own, it's just going to be like you know, guy talk. Right. So exactly. It'll be a, a, a little change in the format, um, but it's still going to be the same show. So. Yeah. Absolutely. Mm. Yeah, it's very nice cold draw. Tasty. So I'm lighting with my, uh, I don't lighter. know what the hell this is, lighter that I got, yeah. <laughs> is that the one that someone took? Uh, the van, yeah. Yeah, van gave yeah. me. Yeah, very, very cool van to hook me up. He saw my, my crappy old lighter that I've had forever. <laughs> yeah, uh, and van's in, uh, at uh, Cigar Emporium in Houston, Houston Texas. yeah, great shop. Um, he's got a lot of really good cigars in there. Um, For parking, as small a store as he is, <laughs> he's got a great humidor. He, he does. really does. Yeah, he does. He has a lot of variety it's in It's very there. similar to Matt as far as his humidor. His humidor is tiny, but it has an incredible selection. And he also has, you know, the, the cabinets outside, and he's got mm-hmm. some, you know, more expensive stuff yeah. in those cabinets. It's yeah. hot. Dead air, dead air, dead air. Dead air, 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 dead air. Going a little Pink Panther there. I saw I noticed that. Yeah. I didn't know if I wanted to acknowledge it, but I noticed it. Yeah. That's what I could come up with when we're doing that. That's what I do. It's my skill set. Yes. Reach because as we as we just stuff. were talking about, you're Mexican, so you suck at basketball. I do suck at basketball, and most yes. Mexicans do suck at basketball. Although the Mavericks do have a player, J.J. Barea, who helped him win the championship a few years ago. Is he really Mexican? I don't remember, and he might not even be. I just thought about he's it. He might be Spain. He might be Spain. I think he might be from Spain. But at one point, he had a hot girlfriend. I don't know if his girlfriend's He's Oops. still of the brown variety, so exactly. we'll give it to him. We'll give it to him. There you go. So he, he's still Mexican. Yeah. Whatever. Anyway. He's, Sp- he's, he's, Spain, he's Spanish. He's it's Latin. Spanish. Well, there you go, Latin. There That's the go. word I was looking for. Yeah, I, I, yeah. I don't even know the word. I'm yeah, no. <laughs> I know. And I know more Spanish than you do, too. That's, I know the bad words, and I know enchilada and burrito and stuff like that. That's about the You know the food. Know. You could say the food. But I, surprisingly, when I was in the Dominican Republic, I picked up quite a bit, and I was speaking it, and I had no idea where the hell it came from. Mm-hmm. It might have just been some primordial ooze coming up or something, <laughs> or the amount of alcohol that was in me. That, that, was, that was could bringing have it back. a lot to do with Like, high school was unlocked, and I was throwing out shit, and... Abe was like, damn, you know Spanish? I'm like, no, I don't. I, don't I really don't know Spanish. I don't know where that's coming from. Just ignore me. Well, I probably said my pants are on fire or something. I have no idea what I just said. <laughs> and I know I've told it, but I'm going to tell it again. In fumo. Not everybody listens to every show, so we can repeat stories. But uh, yeah, of I course. used to be an apartment manager. So all my maintenance people, stereotype, I know, but still, they were 95% of them were Mexican. Yeah. And so I had to learn Spanish. That's what Spanish I know. Now, I can't speak it, but you can talk to me, and I'll understand everything you're saying. You'll do this. But if you want me to say it back to you, I have no yeah. idea. I, no, I don't know how to speak yeah. it, really. I, but I can understand it really well. Yeah. That's what, that's that's the joy of Google Translate. Exactly. The, I use exactly. that a lot when I was yeah. over there. Yeah. Translate a lot of things. And then they'll <laughs> look at you weird like, what? And I'm like, all right, maybe I'm speaking slang. I don't know. Punta, what does that mean? I don't understand. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> sounds nasty. It sounds like I'm going to get laid. Is that what it is? Like, no, it's where the beach is. Like, shit. Damn it. Well, you get laid at the beach, right? I don't know. Yeah, they have a drink called Sex on the Beach, so there mm. you go. So obviously it happens. Never happened to me, but apparently it does happen in the world. So, yeah, supposedly, yeah. Yeah. Supposedly. It happened to me. Spring you got, break. You had sex on a beach? Spring break, 89. 
Yes, it did happen. Damn it. Yeah. That sucks in a pool. Does that count? Well, it's not know. a fancy drink. You can't yeah, call it. Yeah, it should pool. be a sex in a pool. <laughs> sex in a jacuzzi. Something like that. Right. Jeez. You have to shake it when you, when you serve it. This sucks. <laughs> <laughs> So what do you think so far? So it's far, a, nice. It's, yeah, it's, it's, nice. Mild, it's nice morning smoke, pretty mild. It's got a lot of nice flavor to it. Great coffee um, smoke, I would imagine. A little bit of spice to it. Yeah. Got great waftage, yes. which is a term that doesn't exist, and Todd Vance told us it did. Yes. And we've used it on every show, and yet the term doesn't exist. Well, we're making it exist. Yeah, we're, we're making it. It's one of the things we're, we're bringing to the table. We're creating it. We're creating it's, it. We're, it's, it's our version of, uh, what's that word that you keep saying to him from the ticket? Oh, regonk. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's our regonk. It's our regonk. Uh, Lee's going to be happy we worked regonk into the show. <laughs> <laughs> we try and please. We try yes, and please. Yes, we do. This is, a, seriously, I love every shop I go into. I do, because it's fun, because every shop has its own character, and that's what's mm -hmm. cool about our job. But this shop is great. I really love this shop. Uh, I don't get to come here as often as I'd like, like once every four or five weeks, but I still yeah. love coming out here. It's great. Yeah, for sure, yeah. It is. It's very big nice. Big humidor. I wish we could show how big their humidor is. It's L-shaped. It's yeah. L-shaped. It's got one, two, like five shelves all the way across. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And a great selection here. Would you say this is the biggest of the three? Because they do have three shops. They I have don't this know. one. They I have, don't know. Uh, Murphy. Frisco's, pretty, Frisco's probably wider, but doesn't have as much space for cigars. And Murphy's probably about Murphy's the size. Murphy's about the size of this, like, I think. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I think it's yeah. probably about the size of this. Yeah. So they have three shops. Murphy, Texas, uh, Frisco, Texas, which is where you live. Mm-hmm. That's and my then, shop. Uh, yeah, and shop then uh, a lot. Rockwall. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Frisco's become my home shop just because it's close. Um, Although you say that all the time, but you're at Fr Calypso. I'm at Calypso almost. once a week because we do the show. <laughs> That's you, yeah, but you also come up and hang out too. So and occasion, you, if I can. You probably hit Calypso wife. at least yeah. five or six times a week. No. Uh, a month, I mean, not a yeah, week. A month. Yeah, a month. A month. Yeah. yeah. I hit it five or six times a week. Cause <laughs> yeah, it's a blind. It's, it's a like drop kick three miles from my house. It's stumbly distance. Yeah. Sort of. Yeah. So when I'm drunk drinking, I don't have to. can walk. You can. Yeah, you can take Jump the, on the uh, bus or whatever, the dart bus Whatever that thing, thing is, what do we call it? Uh, Uber. Oh, it's Uber. Uber, Uber yeah. yeah. What did I call it? What was the, well, I don't remember I don't what you remember. called it. It was stupid. Oust or something. Oust, that's yeah, what it was. Oust, oust home. Oust. Yeah, you take <laughs> oust home. Jeez. Uh, Have you ever used Uber? No, 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 no. But I was at a store where I was. has. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I was so. at a store and a guy had an Uber customer show up and bought like there five boxes of Davidoff or something. It was like a $1,000 order or something. So I was like. I'll pay for your Uber. I'm like, yeah. yeah, I don't blame you. I'd pay yeah, for Yeah, no kidding, today. right? Yeah. There was a bunch of them over at Ron's thing yeah. at the end of the night when you, after I you know. guys took off. There's a and bunch I probably should have done that because yeah. my hotel was like three miles away. And I, But say I got there so early, I had like a prime parking space. Oh, yeah. And I was yeah. like, where'd you park? I'm like, in the parking lot. Yeah. Really? How'd you get in the parking lot? <laughs> I did too. I got lucky. I, I, I drove in. I saw that it was a zoo. There was cops right there with these little buggy things mm -hmm. and stuff. And I was like, uh, uh, what are you here? Are you here for the event? I'm like, yeah. Like, are you a vendor? I was like, I might, you know, I like so showed my PDR card. They're like, oh, okay, we can go in. I'm like, <laughs> nice. That's so nice. I got in, parked right by the shop That's next awesome. to Ron's. And so we'll mention what Ron's thing was. It's Texas Cigar Festival. It was mm -hmm. a big deal. What do you have, like 700, 800 people there? Yeah, 800 uh, tickets sold. Yeah. Live band, free food, open bar. It was a fun, fun open event. Open bar was next really year. Fun, if yeah. you get a chance, he usually does, he does it in April. Mm -hmm. uh, go to that next year. It's awesome. But you got to buy tickets. The I mean, he sells out it within sells an hour. Out in, yeah, ninety seconds is yeah. what he said. It sold ninety out in, seconds. So, yeah. That's okay, pretty, well, uh, pretty that's hard. Pretty awesome. It's like yeah. buying tickets to Sticks or something. Well, not Sticks, but Sticks. <laughs> I think Sticks would probably sticks have a couple of hours to it. <laughs> sticks. Okay, buying buying tickets to Rush. It's like buying tickets to Rush. Apparently, Rush sells out. Yeah, like Rush that sells still. out like yeah. that. Neil Diamond actually does. You and know, I'm, he's I'm never going had a to see Rush in a couple of weeks. I'm going to go see Neil Diamond. Excellent. Oh shit! No, I'm not. I'm going to be out of town. Do you have tickets already? I was going to buy tickets today, actually, and well, I just you, realized you, I'm going to be out of town. Maybe I'm not going to be out of town. Maybe I'll do something differently and not be out of town. <laughs> my diabetes. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Anyway, but uh, yeah, you know, like Neil Diamond's never had a concert that didn't sell out. I, I believe it, man. Neil Diamond's a pimp. I mean, he's been and he's been doing it since the mid '60s. So that's pretty impressive. That's pretty impressive, yeah. But uh, back to Rush. You know, Rush has never had an album that didn't go gold. Yeah, yeah. That's also impressive. That's also very impressive, especially yeah. for now. I mean, they don't get any radio play anymore, and yet nope, their nope. albums they still just sell like crazy. I was at a, a shop in um, in Fort Worth at over at Lakeview, uh, Lake Worth, Lake mm -hmm. Worth shop. Yeah. And there was a guy Eddie there. Eddie Gervito's brother. Eddie Gervito, he's got a brother <laughs> and another guy that's not his brother. But yeah, so <laughs> horrible, horrible song. Worst song ever. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> but I was at that shop, and there was a guy there, and we were talking about the concerts and stuff. And I'm like, yeah, I'm going to Rush next week. And he's like, well, I'm going to Rush tomorrow. I'm like, 
What? They're not here tomorrow. He's like, I'm going to Tulsa. I'm like, why are you going to Tulsa? When they're going to come so here. This guy is like a fanatic. He's seen okay. him like 24 right. times since the 70s. He's part of the Rush VIP crew. So he oh, gets nice. in like an hour before anybody else can buy tickets. And he puts, you put in like, I want best ticket available. Mm -hmm. The best ticket available was in Tulsa. It was VIP, backstage pass, floor seat, nice. level nine. That's very cool. So he, he opted out for the floor seat because he's like, I can't stand. So I'm going to go. He's like off to the mezzanine, like yeah. the first mezzanine. But he still gets backstage and stuff. So that's cool. That's really cool. Okay. So there's two bands that are very well known that are three people bands. Mm -hmm. And it's Rush and ZZ Top. And yep. they both put out a lot of noise. And, 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 and I mean it in a good way. I mean, yeah, yeah. that's a lot of noise for three people to put out. And both yeah. bands do a very good job of... Exactly. It sounds like it sounds like the Almond Brothers, yeah. which has like you know eighty four piece band or something exactly, like that. Exactly. Yeah. It was like all the brothers, which yeah. is like thirty or thirty. Well, they got something. like three drummers and four basses. It's exactly. Like, yeah, yeah. But yeah, you get ZZ Top and Rush, three people, and it's it sounds great. If you've ever seen Rush, uh, I saw them on their Power Windows tour, like back in the eighties, I guess, uh, or early nineties. I don't know what it was exactly, but uh, you know, it, it's literally three people on stage, and you hear keyboard and stuff, and you're like, "Where's the?" Keyboard. Yeah, is there somebody behind? It's him with his foot. He's got yeah, like a foot yeah, pedal that does yeah. keyboard. I'm like, are you shitting me? Yeah, they're crazy. Like, that's awesome. Yeah, I mean, that's yeah, freaking yeah. cool. And Rush is one of those bands that I don't know much mm -hmm. of their stuff. Moving Pictures. I had that. Yeah. Of course, everybody in the 80s had Moving Pictures. 2112. Yeah. Uh, oh, yeah, 2112. I had that one, too. Yeah. Uh, but uh, what I do know about them is that they just sound great. I mean, and they're one of those distinctive sounds. I can be flipping the station and be like, oh, it's a Rush song. Yep. Even though yep. I don't know the song, I'm, I can tell it's Rush. Yeah. You know, it's awesome. Yeah. Yeah, they're cool. They're cool. I'm looking forward to that. And yeah, actually, my, my daughter is looking forward to that. And oh, she's she going to? Yeah, she's 16. She She's actually the one that found out they were coming for. She's like, Rush is coming. I'm like, what? She's like, yeah, they're nice. coming. I'm like, oh, okay. Well, that's good parenting. Yeah, it is good parenting. Yeah. Where I said, you know, it was good parenting for my mom to take me to see Texas Chainsaw when exactly. I was four. Yeah. I think that was good parenting. It was good And parenting, you do good yeah. parenting in that uh, your 16 year old daughter knows who the hell Rush is. And made her get good grades so she can go. It's like, yeah, I got straight A's for two, two semesters in a row and, you know, two, six weeks in a row. She's like, okay. So she did it. Nice. Now I got to find another concert so she keeps her grades up. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think Neil Diamond would do it for her, but that's <laughs> okay. No. Uh, <laughs> probably not. Probably not. No. Maybe uh, Barry Manilow. I don't know. Maybe. Did you uh, see you didn't get to see The Who? The Who was just here for their 50th tour. No, because Roger Daltrey can't sing. Well, that's what I've heard. And yeah. I remember at the Super Bowl a couple of years ago, he sounded like crap. Yeah. But the four people I know that went to the concert said he sounded great. Oh, so yeah? So I don't know. Maybe it's had a good day, and maybe the Super Bowl was a bad maybe day. Maybe it was knows? just a recording. Could be. Could be. <laughs> He's lip syncing his but own But you know what's stuff. funny about The Who is that... You know, Daltrey's who I always think of. I know Townsend writes everything, and he's a guitar player. Yeah, yeah. So now he's considered the front man. Pete Townsend is considered the front man for Rush. Or for Rush. For, for the, who. the Who. Really? I yeah. didn't know that. Yeah. Really? It says Pete Townsend and Roger Daltrey. That's weird. Yeah, that's that, weird. Was it always that way? That's, I so guess. Was, I, I guess Pete Townsend was a bigger deal before they kind of put the band together well, or something. Yeah. Yeah. I don't yeah. know. Yeah. That's weird. Yeah. I know Pete Townsend did a lot of solo stuff, and he did really well, well with a, it. So. God. Well, okay. I didn't like. The first movie. It was that double feature that Tarantino put out a couple years ago. No, but Kill Bill or whatever. No. Uh, oh, uh, uh, Planet Terror and... Uh, and uh, yeah, it was Death, the Grindhouse Death Proof. Death yeah, Proof. Death Proofing Planet Terror. And in Death yeah. Proof, uh, Rosario Dawson is telling a story about this song, and they play it, and it was uh, Pete Townsend with his first band, and I can't remember what the first band was. But T Townsend was in a band before The Who. Okay. Well, and they had go. one hit, you know, yeah. or whatever, or at least one song that Tarantino liked enough to put in that movie. Yeah. That's like Eric Clapton with, like, how many bands was that guy oh, in before, Cream, before he was Eric Clapton? Derek and the Dominoes. Yeah, yeah exactly. exactly. You know, I heard that Derek and the Dominoes song the other day, and I was like, I thought that was, I thought that was Eric Clapton. With no. Layla? The yeah. Layla. Yeah, exactly. I always, you always equate that with Eddie, Cl yeah. with, with, Eddie with Clapton. Eddie Clapton. <laughs> Eddie Clapton. <laughs> Eddie Clapton. <laughs> Eddie Clapton. Eddie Clapton. Eddie Clapton. Eddie Clapton. Eric Clapton. But it's, no, it's Derek and the Dominoes. Yeah, so, Derek yeah. and the Dominoes. Yeah. Who knew? Yeah. But the version that's often played, the live one, I think, was his, though, wasn't yeah. it? So well, the unplugged one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that was that's it. the one you that hear was, a lot. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. and that's yeah. from just Eric Clapton. But yeah, or Eddie Clapton, Eddie Clapton. His, 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 his lesser known brother, brother yeah, <laughs> that tours as him and gets in trouble. And like, you ever hear about the Gallagher? Like thing? the Jose Canseco, Ozzy Canseco. Thing? No, Did, you hear you about hear the Gallagher story? thing? No. there's a Gallagher one too. Okay, so you know Gallagher, the comedian, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah. yeah. Well, his he has a brother, mm -hmm. and it's he tours as not Gallagher, but he does the exact same shit. Let's go see not Gallagher. I saw him at a hotel one. I mean, this is a, it was like a shitty hotel mm -hmm. with a bar and there, and it was like you know a big old poster of it was like little tiny letters, not Gallagher. And I'm like, Gallagher's here. And that's why I like, said not Gallagher. Yeah, it said not Gallagher. <laughs> and I'm nice. like, that he looks a little young to be Gallagher. And I talked to the guy at the bar. He's like, yeah, it's his brother. He tours and does stuff. And he's like, 
he's probably going to get his ass sued off, but he does the same <laughs> jokes, the same stuff. Smashes watermelons. Really? Yeah, stuff like the that. whole nine. Wow. Yeah, the whole nine. It was weird. Crazy. So I was like, well, how much is this thing? He's like, eh, you buy a couple of beers, you get it to see him. I'm like, I'll have a couple of oh, beers. Yeah, okay. <laughs> so, so I saw not Gallagher, and he was actually the, just as good as Gallagher. Nice. <laughs> well, uh, Jose Cateco, former baseball player, actually played for the Rangers for a couple of years. Actually, I've met him several times. Okay. Uh, but uh, he got, remember several years ago, probably in the early aughts, maybe mid-aughts, they were doing those celebrity boxing matches, like where Danny Bonaducci would fight somebody yeah, yeah. or whatever. Well, Jose Canseco signed up, and I think he got like 150000 I mean, it's a lot of money mm-hmm. to show up for the celebrity fight. And he sent his twin brother, Ozzy, <laughs> instead. Really? And his brother, Ozzy's not as big. And, not <laughs> and he, he even gave him his driver's license to show that, yeah, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm Jose Canseco. I was like, no, you're not. <laughs> <laughs> so did they get caught? Yeah, I mean, they got caught. <laughs> wow. And the promoter sued the hell out of him. Wow. Of oh, That's man. no bueno, man. <laughs> yeah. Spanish word that I know, bueno. One of the few. And no. <laughs> oh, man. You can't hear this, but my favorite... The title song of my favorite album was playing right now. What song is that? Goodbye, Yellow Brick Road, Belt. And oh, Road. there my you go. Favorite yeah. album, love that album. That's a good album, man. And uh, I yeah. was a more of a Captain Fantastic and the Dirt Brown great, cowboy great guy. Album. Great album. That was oh. that was mine when Dude, I was a kid. That was the one I grabbed. The artwork towards, on yeah. both of those albums. Oh yeah, awesome. covers is awesome. Amazing. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. yeah, remember when albums used to have artwork? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, <laughs> go figure. You know? Remember when they just said <laughs> yeah. it's like really fucking cool well, artwork on an album? Did start and stare at it for hours? Did that start with Sgt. Pepper's? Maybe. I don't know, man. Because before, I mean, you got to think about like early Beatles stuff is like pictures of them, and that's it. Yeah. But then you started getting into like this late, like '60s when the psychedelic era is really when. It well, the white album up. was just a white album cover. Yeah. Period. You know. Yeah. But uh, Sgt. Pepper's was one you could stare at forever. Um, Captain Fantastic. Yeah. Goodbye, Yellow Road. Mm-hmm. Uh, shit. All uh, any of those like oh weird like obscure bands from the UK like Budgie and stuff had yeah. really cool covers yeah. and stuff yeah, like that's that. Cool. So it's awesome. Yeah. Yeah, and it was really art. I mean, yeah. that's what it was. It, it was. was. And H H R Geeker probably wouldn't do any of those. No. Because he doesn't do Kenny posters. Chesney doesn't do stuff like that. <laughs> yeah. Katy Perry, she doesn't do anything. No, I've seen H.R. Giger, the artist. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Future oh, Kill. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Ah, yeah. Wow, that's a nice callback. A, a reach yeah, back around. Reach back around, yeah. Nice. There you go. Good job. So, um, back to Frightmare real quick. Um, I talked I've to, watched uh, that William Sadler thing like nine times. That was such a great, it's one of my favorite <laughs> interviews I've ever done in my You're life. like, I touched William Sadler. <laughs> <laughs> he touched me, too. He kept reaching, grabbing my shoulder. Yeah. Oh, I listened to our last episode, and I'm going to issue an apology right now to William Sadler. Because I had read that he was a dick. Mm-hmm. And I mentioned it. He was the furthest thing from it. That guy was as nice and as genuine as any person you'd ever meet in your life. Very you'd have no idea that guy was a celebrity if you didn't, hadn't seen him in anything. Yeah, exactly. You wouldn't. Yeah. Not yeah. at all. Just real so. soft-spoken. Real, it, he was real you know, precise with his words. He only mm-hmm. said words he needed to say. And we were talking about how he, you could yeah. tell he was classically trained. Yeah, he could tell he was classically trained yeah. actor. Absolutely. You know? He didn't put a thought out there unless... Now, that's probably why we didn't interview Tara Reid, because she's like, yep, do, 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 do. you know, I'm going to say everything. So. But as we said, she was cool, too. She was very cool, yeah. We just yeah. didn't get to interview her, but she wound up being re- really cool. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, I've watched that William Sailor interview like nine times. Yeah, I sent, I sent Lloyd an email saying thanks for letting us go. That's and cool. he's like, oh, man, great. Thanks for the thanks for the interviews and stuff. I saw him like right up the same day. It's awesome, because you're the only one who did that. I'm like, that's right. Oh, awesome. there you go. Cool. So there that's cool. Go. So we're, we got a next year in yeah, oh, yeah, with we're, him. Yeah, we're so. That's I awesome. need to do is find out if he does any other promoting stuff and get in with that. Yeah, we need to get with that one guy. Uh, oh, Tara, it was Tara Reed's manager. Yeah. I, I have his card. I saw it this yeah. morning. And he said, uh, I rep a lot of other acts. If you want them on their show, let me know. So we need to get in touch Sweet. with him. We yeah. need to do that. Yeah, yeah for you sure. You didn't hear him say that? Yeah, no. That's I what he was telling me. Because uh. I was the one that asked for the interview and yeah, I got yeah. shut down. But he said, I rep for other other acts. So he said, let me know and I'll get, get them on your show. So That'd we need be to freaking awesome. Him. We need to do that. Yeah. Just start making those connections for sure. Yeah. All right, so we're going to take a break. We're at the uh, end of the first third, basically. Tasty cigar. It is very tasty. But you know, in all honesty, I don't think I've ever had a bad Perdomo. I, I can't say I have either, man. I, back when I first started smoking cigars again, that Lot 23, I smoked the crap out yeah, of it. Yeah, I did too. Great yeah, cigar. Absolutely. All right, so we'll be back for the second third in a bit. All right, we're back for the second third of the Perdomo 2005 small batch. Nice tasting cigar. Mm-hmm. It's, uh, it's milder, mildish. But not mild, not mild, boring in a way. No, no, it's got some it's spice got, to it's it. Got some spice. Uh, you retrohale it, you're going to get a lot more spice through the nose. More of a baker, like a cinnamony kind of spice. Yeah, to very it. cinnamony, not, not peppery, and spicy, but nice. I like it. Mm-hmm. Very good. I've seen this in a bunch of stores. I just haven't tried it yet. So. Yep, got some earthy notes to it. A little bit of nuttiness. Yeah. Tasty, tasty. And we'll mention that obviously this is Calypso Cigar Review, but we are at In Fuego Cigars in Rockwall, Texas. Yes, and um, and Nick Perdomo. Yes. Who hasn't been to uh, this area in a long time? Right. It's actually coming next week. 
to all the all three. stores. Yeah. yeah, and we'll give you times in the next segment. But mm-hmm. uh, that's something you certainly want to make yourself available for. If you've never met the man, he's uh, definitely a, a legend in the in the industry, and it's a, a good thing. And, to and he's a nice guy. He's yeah. a nice guy. I've met him. You've met nice him. Guy. We both met him. Yeah. Yep. Very cool. Yeah. So what else is going on in the world of Randy? What you want to talk about? Uh, stuff. I don't know. Just great. That's doing greatness. everything. I know. <laughs> just doing, just doing the thing, man. Just that's what I'm doing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, you got new shirts, which is awesome. Yeah, yeah. They're Nike. They're Nike. Nike that's shirts. Fancy. That's Those have to be fancy. almost as much as the other ones. I, I think Todd think. said 35 bucks a shirt. Oh my God. So we've got, you know, and, and you know, I walk in stores like, can I get those shirts? No. <laughs> <laughs> They're too expensive. Yeah. Can't give those out. Give me 40. <laughs> <laughs> I'll give you the one off my back. Yeah. I only have to wear one and just wash it every day. I'll be fine. I'll give you the other four. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, don't do that. No, I'm you will I'm, get fired. <laughs> I'm joking. I would never do that. No, joking. I never do. He winked. <laughs> <No. laughs> Offer me enough. Uh, never mind. No. Well, sure. Sure. <laughs> don't, don't. <laughs> so, yeah, Brockwall, um, it, like we talked about, is an area that's definitely a, a unique in the Dallas-Fort Worth area. has kind of a, a European feel to it. There's actually a lot out here, and it's grown a lot. Um, yeah. I was here in Rockwall probably two years ago, and half the stuff wasn't here. Man, I grew up in the Dallas area. Yeah. Rockwall was a one-horse town when yeah. I was growing up. It's shocking to see how big it's gotten. Yeah, it's know. a really nice theater, like walking I distance. Know, I know. I man, know. Like all these great now food th- places. Yeah, that's, that's what this area is. We mentioned the lake and the concerts. And by the way, it's a man-made lake, but it's huge. Mm-hmm. It is a that's huge. That's a man-made break. lake? That's a man-made lake. Oh, I didn't know that. Huge. I didn't know that. Uh, lake Ray Hubbard is the lake. Okay. And, uh, man, this is a little cool shopping center. It's very Italy-like, you know. Yeah, yeah. And like you said, and I mean, yeah, like there's Mexican food, there's pizza, there's ice cream, there's mm-hmm. coffee. Mm-hmm. And... There's a cigar shop. Yep. We should check out that cigar shop someday. We've oh, wait. No, we're here. Never mind. Yeah, we've checked it out before. Yeah. <laughs> and they got, it they got a lot of pipe tobacco and pipe stuff if you like pipes. Yeah. You know, they Very got everything. Cool. Yeah. They get the Keurig yep. for coffee. They do. I'll tell you my Keurig story. No, go for it. I know I've never told it on air. So, I don't know, probably 02, 03, I was out of a job. And I got called by an education company, which was the field I was in, mm-hmm. and they offered me a job. And then I got a call. This is back when Monster was big. Do you remember Monster? Yeah, yeah. That's where you put your People resumes out. Monster, yeah. I, don't, I don't know. Oh, I, don't Mo- know. Mo- I thought you meant the drink, yeah. No, 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 Monster, the yeah, website Monster, for yeah. your re- resumes. Yeah. So I guess this lady saw my resume on Monster, and she called me, and she was, like, all excited. And she says, uh, yeah, we're at a new company called Keurig. I really want to talk to you. Your, your resume looks great and all this kind of stuff. So I'm like, well, what is Keurig? I don't know what that is. And she said, well, it's like the, you make individual cups of coffee. And I was like, yeah, and what else? Well, no, that's what it is. It's a machine. It makes individual cups of coffee, and we sell the coffee with the machine. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> and she's like, uh, oh, it's great for businesses because, uh, you know, they don't have to make pots of coffee. They can just make each person can make their own cup of coffee. Mm. And I went, yeah, that sounds that sounds stupid to me. <laughs> <laughs> so I took the educational job and was fired in like nine months. Thanks. <laughs> so Should have taken the What an idiot. I didn't, it just didn't make sense. It's like yeah. really one cup of coffee is all it makes. Well, you've yeah. never really been a coffee guy. If you yeah, were, if I, mean, I like the it. Right guy. I like it. I don't love it. But yeah. yeah but if you were a coffee guy, you'd been like, hell yeah, go yeah. I get one. Yeah, I'm all <laughs> over it. You know, just sell it for a little bit, get the machine, and get the hell well, out of it. Well, you know there. what the funny thing was, was it kind of died on the vine and i remember like 607 saying i'm glad i didn't take that keurig job because that didn't happen yeah and that, now it's like everywhere yeah oh, everywhere yeah. oh yeah i mean individuals have them they were pitching it to businesses at the yeah. time but now individuals have, i mean i know 20 people that have a keurig in their house it's like really son of a bitch yeah <laughs> yeah but then i wouldn't mm. be with aj fernandez so true, true, true 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 yeah that would yeah <laughs> Great story, bro. Tell it again. Yeah. yeah okay. <laughs> so I got this call one day. No. Oh, yeah? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Jeez. Oh, man. We steal from the ticket way too much. That was that's a ticket break. That's a ticket break. You steal from the ticket. I don't know ticket. <laughs> I know, but I've but I've stolen from the ticket so much that now it's worked into your vernacular. Ah, son of a bitch. It's a great story. Tell it again. I mean, that's a ticket. Everybody break. says that. I know. It's it everywhere. <laughs> I don't think the ticket has the exclusive no, on that they one. Don't. They don't. Uh, Ticket does have a res- exclusive on Regonk, but I have stolen Regonk. Mm. Well, <laughs> the other one stole our little, you know. Yeah, the fans stole our uh, Joe Wagner and uh, shit. Uh, whatever the. What the hell? It was a Minisode. Oh, Minisode, yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Bastards. Those bastards. Fucking we bastards. We need to get on radio. Yeah, well. We need to get on radio. It's a flattery. It's flattery. I'm going to look yeah. at it as flattery. Okay, we can look at it that way. If you want to look at it that way. That's fine. 
<laughs> Who else talks about Jill Wagner? Nobody talks about Jill Wagner. Oh, people, they, they she's did. got a lot of fans. I know, she's but nobody talks fans. about her on the radio. This company, this radio station did. Bastards. Yeah, true, true, true. Oh, my God, look who it is. Holy crap. A living legend, legend just, just walked, walked in. into the store. Yes, he did. The great Rick Polar. Rick Polar, the man, the myth, the legend. He was with AJ, or AJ Fuente. What the hell am I talking about? He was with Arturo <laughs> Fuente for many, many, AJ Fuente. Yeah. yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm officially fired. Yeah. Thanks. Would they, well, maybe someone <laughs> marries somebody from those two families. <laughs> <There you laughs> <go>. <laughs> <laughs> AJ Fuente somewhere exactly. eventually. Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> geez. Yeah, that's cool, man. That's awesome. good to see him good out and about. Yeah. Oh, and Mark's here. Mark's uh, Lee's brother. Yep, yep. And he runs the uh, the Frisco store. Yes, yes. Yep. Really good guy. Good golfer, too. That's what I hear. I don't know if Lee's a good golfer, but I assume he is. But I know Mark is. I don't know. Might I, run in the family. I do know that I am not a good I am golfer. Not. I am not either. I like to play it. I suck at it, though. I like to play it. I like to smoke cigars and play it and yeah. drink things. Yeah. But other than that, eh. eh I'd I'll, do kick, it. I'll kick the ball if I get in the rough. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> foot wedge. <laughs> yeah. Use the foot wedge. <laughs> Don't count that. <laughs> <laughs> nice foot wedge. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Rick Paul was actually on our wedge. show. He was what episode he three was, or yeah. four? It was like With very the, uh, early El on. Baton. Yeah, very With early Newman on in the show. Then, yeah. yeah, yeah. That was uh, a fun episode. We got a lot of good information. From yeah, we did. Then, so Absolutely. Yeah. It was yeah. a great episode. I love that story about the guy that seasoned his humidor with throwing it in the bathtub. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> <That's awesome. laughs> and then he bitched because it really fell apart. It's like, what are you throwing in a bathtub? <laughs> Dumbass. <laughs> yeah, don't ever throw your humidor in a bathtub. No. Talk to your tobacconist. They'll help you through the process. Yes, if exactly. they're a good tobacconist. And most of them will. And there's, and there's any wealth say, of information. Of I would say you can online. look it up on YouTube, but I've seen some dummies on YouTube that really don't know what they're talking about. So yeah. get yeah. a couple opinions. If you're going to look at the YouTube, look at the thumbs up and thumbs down. Make sure yeah. there's not more <laughs> thumbs down than thumbs up right. before you take exactly. that guy's advice. Because there is a lot of dummies. You know, it pisses me off. It's one get a thumbs down, but they don't reply and tell us why they gave us the fucking thumbs down. They just give mm-hmm. us a thumbs down. Well, and we, we don't get a lot. Yeah. We only get like one or two. We know if it's the, if it's on one of the episodes with the audios reversed, it's probably the German guy. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Which I appreciate that he gives us. I, some I love that we feedback. got a comment. Thank you, thank you. Please comment. I'm going to put it wrong every time now, so you can comment on it. Exactly. <laughs> so we get a comment. Exactly. <laughs> not a freaking episode. Exactly. <laughs> so what's so, going on with Brandon? Oh man, what isn't going on with Brandon? Yeah. So um, we are debt free, which is nice. That's cool. Yeah, and we just refinanced our hey, house. I've got some debt. You want to take care of that? That'd be uh, great. I can help you through that. <laughs> <laughs> Financial no, I, I, planning. I just want the money. I don't need <laughs> no, advice. No, I, can't, I don't can't need do advice. That, no. Can't do that. <laughs> advice sucks. I don't listen to advice. Yeah, obviously. <laughs> 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 yeah, but I've made it this far without listening to advice. <laughs> so that's, that's a win, I guess, huh? <laughs> exactly. Is that what you're going exactly. for? It's a win. <laughs> wow. It's a win-win. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, yeah, so that, I mean, that's kind of cool. We're... Um, we were considering selling the house and moving, but I think we're going to stay just because we like the house. We've been there so long. It's our home, and yeah. it's nice to have your kids have a home yeah. that is their home. Exactly. You know, so yeah. uh, we, did a, we did a refinance uh, for a 10-year finance. We're, we'll be paid off in 10 years instead of you know 20. Nice. And it's still lower than our existing payment. So right, there you go. Our interest rate went down. That's like how you get out of debt right there. Three. That's how you get out of debt that's right there. That's how you get out of debt right there. That's it. Yeah. <laughs> yep, that's how you do it. Well, we paid off all our cards. Or, or you win the lottery, too. and that gets you. That would be fantastic. Could get you but you have yeah. to play the lottery to win, and I don't play the lottery. You know, I quit pa- playing it, and I don't know why. I still want to win it. I just yeah. need to play it. <laughs> yeah, eh, you know, I don't know. It's a buck. It's a buck that just goes nowhere. It, I don't know. It, uh, yeah. Yeah. It's for education in Texas. Not. <laughs> Remember, that's what they pitched yeah. it at when they started the lottery. Oh, we'll help for educationals. What do they use it for? Do we even know? highways and stupid stuff i mean i heard the percentage that goes to education is like eight percent or something I, I believe that i believe yeah. that shit yeah well salaries so, for the people that work for the lottery commission i'm sure i'm sure this is tasty man it I is would definitely smoke this i'm gonna go on a rant that okay i didn't go expect to go for go for or go towards go on go or on in, yeah in whatever. the direction of that rant yeah. yeah okay go near it anyway yeah okay talking about money that's supposed to go to certain places and it doesn't yeah Damn you charities that don't get the money to the people that you're supposed to be trying to help. Oh, there's so many of those, yeah. Yeah. yeah so and I won't mention a bunch, but the big ones. You know the big ones, yeah. Yeah, the big ones, and I do mean the big ones. Mm. I mean, it's like less than 10% goes to the actual, it's all salaries and administrative fees and all that bullshit. Bullshit. Find a charity that the money goes to the people. Yeah. Yeah. You know. And so my, my thought on charity and, you know, I've got my brother going through cancer, so I've donated to small cancer things that I know the money's going to, you know. Yeah. Uh, 
but my ideal form of charity is to hey brother mm-hmm. you need some money here you go mm-hmm. that's my form of charity <coughs> to help out that way yeah. and i don't mean it charity in a negative way you know like i'm being condescending to him that he oh you're unique no hey i'm I, this is how i want to help out i don't want to give to some big organization i want to give you the money and make sure you can take care of it and you can utilize it for what you need yeah buy your help. kids a meal buy you you know Family whatever you friends, need yeah, that exactly. thing, yeah. yeah yeah that's my favorite form of charity but uh I agree. Yeah. I like giving back to I mean, we, we used to do this a lot. We haven't done it in a while. We probably need to start doing it again. But, like, on Thanksgivings and stuff, we'd go out to the soup kitchens and help out. You know, mm-hmm. that was kind of cool. Just do that early in the morning and then still be able to have our, yeah. our regular dinner. Yeah, that's cool. Um, stuff like that. We yeah. did the uh, Frisco um, has a resale shop, and you can go there and help them unload trucks and stuff yeah. and all that jazz. Yeah. But then Frisco opened a bigger, new, fancy resale shop, mm-hmm. and that kind of made me go, hmm. Yeah, that kind of sucks. Uh, I didn't know. mention the story, yeah. and I want to mention this. Uh, Joe Wagner has a friend that she grew up with in North Carolina who was on vacation in January or December. I can't remember. Okay. And he was trying to jump a chain fence, and he was apparently very athletic. He ran marathons and stuff like that. His foot got caught. He banged his head. He's paralyzed for life. Oh, damn. So she's been pitching, you know, help. And that's a cool charity because it's like a PayPal account, and it just goes directly to the family. Yeah, yeah. That's awesome. That's a cool charity to, to do. And I can't remember the website or i'd tell you where to yeah. go but uh i donated you know a little bit of money to that you know because that just sucks you're on vacation and you wind up getting paralyzed for life on vacation yeah that sucks that does suck yeah that does suck we're doing something that i've probably done 150 times in my life i've jumped over chain link fences a billion times in my life that sucks yeah i don't think kids do that anymore i guess maybe they do well no because they play ps4 games. yeah exactly <laughs> you know yeah. I didn't know the freaking house. Okay, this is so far out of the loop. I, I didn't realize there was a PS4 until the other day. I saw an ad for it. <laughs> I, <laughs> I forgot like, there was, was a PS4. Like, yeah. a I PS4? knew there was. Yeah. <laughs> I knew there was because there was a game coming out that I was like, well, that looks kind of cool. I might play that and take it on the road with me and go play yeah. it in the hotels. Right. I'm like, yeah. ah, it's PS4 crap. I forgot yeah. about yeah. that. Yeah, I'm like, PS4? Yeah. I still have you a still PS2. Have a PS2. <laughs> I still have a I PS2. I still have a PS2. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Crazy. And I played uh, uh, some relatives of ours uh, over in Houston. I gave them our old Super Nintendo. And they still have it, and it still works. Wow. I played it last time I was there, and I was like, this is awesome. <laughs> my, my, my youngest brother, uh, this was about five years ago, was on a, he'd just broken up with a longtime girlfriend, so I guess he was bored. So he went on eBay, and he found the original Nintendo 64. Yeah. No, Atari. It was Atari. That's okay. uh, the 2600. That's 2600, old school, yeah. And there was a video game that we used to play all the time on there called RBI. It was a baseball game. Yeah. And he found that, and, and he calls me like, dude, I've got RBI on Atari or whatever. Like, <laughs> <laughs> so coming over, ate pizza, drank till four in the morning and played. <laughs> yeah. It was awesome. Was it crappy? <laughs> it was crappy as hell, it but so it was fun. Crappy. Yeah. But it, it was, yeah. It reminded me back when I was 19. It was like awesome. <laughs> yeah, we got, they had those things out for a while. You didn't really see them anymore, but they had those little, uh, it was just like a joystick and you plugged it into your TV and it had like 12 or 13 <laughs> games yeah. in it. Yeah. And we had one that had like Frogger and Dig Dug and a bunch of other stuff. We nice. played through that. And we had another one that had Pole Position. I used to love Pole Position. That game sucks. <laughs> that game is <laughs> horrible. Okay, so the next segment, 80s video games. <laughs> 80s video games. We've right. never done that. We've never done that. We'll take a little break. We'll come back for the last third Let's go say of how the to uh, Perdomo 2005 Small Batch. <laughs> All right, we're back for the last third of the Perdomo 2005 Small Batch. Over Tam- here at In Fuego in Rockwall. Tasty cigar. Tasty, tasty like cigar, it. yeah. If you are into the uh, the mild to medium and you want something that's just going to be... But it's uh, gotten spicier towards the end, man. Mm-hmm. Especially Retro Hell is really going to bite you here. But in a good way. But some good aged tobacco, and it does have that aged tobacco taste. You know, how would you describe aged tobacco? It's kind of a little, little musty. Yeah, a little musty. But it's got that, that you know, it's den- there's a density to the mm-hmm. flavor. Yeah. You know, yeah. There's a density to the flavor it's with aged tobacco. It's a much more... Full, uh, rich flavor. Yeah, so you'd yeah. say it's definitely um, full flavored, but medium body. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, mild to medium body. It starts and mild and it works its way towards. And this short medium. bellicose is four ninety nine. Not bad. Yeah, not bad at all. No. And if you are in the Dallas Fort Worth area and you want to uh, get a little meet and greet with Mick, Nick, Nick, Nick Durbomo, Nick Durbomo, rewind. Uh, if you want to have a little meet and greet with Nick Perdomo, he's going to be here at the all three in Fuego shops on May twelfth, two thousand fifteen. For those that are listening later, yes, uh, Tuesday at the Frisco shop from ten to noon. Uh, the same day at the Rockwall shop from one to three thirty, and then at the Murphy shop from four to seven. Yes. So and he's going to be trucking. Yeah. He's going to be trucking. He's going to be busy. 
I would come by and shake hands think, with him, buy yeah. some cigars. And yeah, I definitely do that. Yeah, Nick's a cool dude. He's yeah. got a great set of hair. Almost, almost as good almost as, as, uh, as Todd Vance. Close. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Pretty close. Probably higher. A little bit higher than Todd yeah, Vance's. And a little blacker for a some reason. gray and salt and peppery. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Cool dude, though. Yeah. Very yeah. cool dude. Very cool dude. And he's very active on Facebook. I like that. Which so. is very cool. Yeah. yeah. He's very, uh, he, he gets social media, which a lot of these guys, you know, they don't really get it. So. Yeah. And it's uh, the wave of the future, people. Get with it. Get yep. with social media. We're a small, small industry. We need to all be on each other's side and follow mm-hmm. each other on Facebook and Twitter. And, uh, and we don't Instagram. get to advertise on television and stuff. Yeah. So you know, right. this, is, this is your advertisement, and most of it's free. Yeah. So use it. I know, it. I know what we do is free, basically. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> very much so. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, we get a cigar from time to time. But <laughs> yeah, we do because we love doing it. It's yeah. fun. We get. It we love. Fun. You know, we have conversations all the time. Anyway, this is just a way yeah. For we're going to sit around talk anyway. Might as well yeah. do it. And yeah, on a and, microphone. And be able to listen to it later when we're 80 and go, I did that back in the day. day. You remember that day? It would just be like a chip stuff. you put in your head. Yeah. Like, I got Randy in my head. <laughs> yeah, you don't want to be in Randy's head, I'll tell you that. I've, I'm there all the time, and it sucks. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> okay, 80s video games. 80s video games. Okay, I remember when my mom and dad got us some. This was like, okay, our parents would do certain things at Christmas. Mm-hmm. We'd get certain packages that would say from mom and dad. And we get certain packages that said from, from Santa, Santa Claus. Yeah, yeah, of course, yeah. And uh, this one was to all three of us, and we're all like, "What the? What is this? You know, we're dying to know what this pack, what this present was." Mm. And it was the Atari Twenty Six Hundred. And uh, we had three games. We had Pitfall Harry. <laughs> you remember okay. that one? Yep. Uh, what was the hamburger one? Uh, Burger Time. Burger Time. Yeah. Yep. And uh, Raiders of the Lost Ark. Okay. And we played the. Crap out of those games. So what were some of your favorite 80s video games? Oh, man. Um, we did the same thing with the Santa Claus and everything. My parents did it a little bit different, and I did it with my kids. And I kind of don't like the way they did it, but we made it a tradition anyway. So we'd have the wrapped gifts, which were from us to mm-hmm. each other. Mm-hmm. And then the already open gifts were from Santa. Because Santa okay. didn't have time to wrap stuff. Right. That, was, gotcha. that was the theory. Yeah, so there was the 2600 right there. I'm like, 2600, bro. You know? <laughs> right. And we got the, uh, the it was, I mean, we had Space Invaders or whatever they called it. I guess it was Space yeah, Invaders. Space Invaders yeah. Pac-Man, which was the worst Pac-Man. <laughs> yes. <laughs> he didn't even move. Yeah, that, he that, just kind of went in a square like this. Yeah, that's not, yeah. And uh, and then Berserk. I played Berserk like oh, yeah. crazy. And then I had like a Dungeons and Dragons games that I played nice. Nice. a lot. Yeah. And the Dungeons and, Gra- the Dungeons and Dragons game was actually a really bad game. Mm-hmm. But I don't. I just played it because it was there was so much variety in it. It was like there was a different dungeon and different monsters, and you got to fight yeah. those. And then a different dungeon and different monsters, and you fight those. And mm-hmm. you know, so I liked that one. But um, and I, and when I had some sports games. Too, and uh, and then you get into um, God, see, twenty six hundred forever, mm-hmm. and then what was after the twenty six hundred? I got an in television. Oh, I, got I always wanted a television. I had a friend. It was and at the time. It sucks now. Yeah, but at the time, it was the most realistic football game oh, yeah. I'd ever seen. Oh, yeah. And I used to play the. I'd go over and to my friend's house just to play. For, too, I never yeah. played the. But I saw the. So so the Intellivision was uh, graphically it was better than the Atari, but. The controller was retarded because it looked like a cell phone. <laughs> yeah. It had a little dial that you turned at the bottom. It had some buttons on the sides, and you put this little sleeve in there. It was like a color-coded sleeve, and and if you took that sleeve off, it looked like a phone. It was like numbers one through five, and then a couple of little weird things. Gotcha. So you put that sleeve in there for each game, and then you played from that sleeve. So if you wanted to like do a yes, hit, yes, I do remember that now. Yeah, you know, yeah. if you were going to hit, you could actually use that circle to do a curve. Mm-hmm. Like I'm going to yeah. hit that curveball, mm-hmm. and then you do a curveball, and I want it to go that way, so it would go that way. You know, and then <laughs> you tell if you were playing the outfield, you'd be like, this guy is, you know. You push the second base guy to catch it, and then you turn the dial, and the guy mm-hmm. would go catch it. Mm-hmm. So it, it took a little bit of figuring out. Yeah. Because it was like, I mean, I don't know why they thought that was a good idea, because none of the video games at the arcade were like right, that. I'm right. like, what the hell is this? Yeah, exactly. You know, just trying to be unique, I yeah. guess. And um, the problem with that was, I mean, the games looked great. They, you learned how to play them. There's a little curve. You learned how to play them, though. Right. And uh, I had Pitfall on that, and it looked fantastic. It looked mm-hmm. almost like the real game. But the problem was that those little plastic sheets that you put in there, because kids mash mm-hmm. buttons, right? Yeah. You mash the shit out of those right. buttons. Yeah. You break that sleeve, and then you're yeah. cutting your fingers on the damn thing. Yeah. So it had tape on it. You know, you <laughs> right. take it out, put some tape on it, play it again, uh, bust it again, <laughs> put some more tape. It was a pain in the ass. Oh, yeah. So. I just hate it when the joysticks would get stuck, and you'd be like, Turn yeah. yeah, and it always gets stuck at the wrong time. You know? Exactly, yeah. <laughs> so my, my dad and I were always, um, he was always a take apart stuff and fix it guy, mm-hmm. and um, he would be the guy that would fix the joysticks in the neighborhood. So they would nice. bring them to us. Uh, my dad figured out that that little there was like, at the bottom of the joystick there was like a little rubber part that was mm-hmm. like you know it was like a gear shift type mm-hmm. thing right and you could actually lift that out from under there and get in there and spray mm-hmm. out the you know the mechanism and stuff because my yeah. dad worked for 3M at the time so he yeah. had canned air which no one had it right. was, that was you know 
only a corporate thing. You couldn't go buy a can of right. air, you know. Yeah. And then so you get like six of them for like yeah, two bucks. Yeah, exactly. So you'd spray it out. We'd go in there and fix stuff, clean it out with Q-tips. I'd clean it out with a Q-tip with some, you know, alcohol and nice. leave it back up and put it back together. And, you know, I was like, you should charge for this. It's like, nah, whatever. It's right. fun, you know. So that's what we do on Saturday mornings. We'd have a couple of, you know, uh, joysticks. <laughs> we'd fix them, watch cartoons, and then we'd play nice. a bunch of Play them to make sure they worked and then give them back to my friends. That's funny. So that's what we used to do. Well, remember with the Nintendo, that was the first one that I re- remember anyway that had the arrows. Mm-hmm. And I remember just using the joystick with Atari, and then it took me a while to figure out Nintendo with the different arrows. Because yeah. especially on, on baseball, mm-hmm. you know, you run the bases, you go up to go this way, and back to go to second, and this yeah. one to go to third, and this one to go to home, and it was like... It took me forever to figure it out, but yeah, yeah it was fun. So they got as the graphics got better, they got more complicated. Yeah, exactly. But um, you know, they were still a blast. And, and you talk about like you know, parents versus grandparents. Mm-hmm. And uh, so the twenty six hundred was a parents my parents' gift to me for Christmas. And the next year it was the the Intel or no, it's my birthday. Mm-hmm. Like maybe seven months later in yeah. July was the Intellivision mm-hmm. that my grandfather gave me just to show up my dad. Basically, right. you know? yeah. <laughs> he's like, "This one's better." Uh-huh. Happy birthday! And I'm yeah. like, "Yay!" Nintendo or the Atari goes on the wayside. <laughs> nice. And play nothing but Intellivision. My dad was like, Arr. "Okay, well, I got uh, what did I get? what Sega Genesis? That was the one before PlayStation. Yep. And uh, or yeah, well, Sega the Genesis, big one. Yeah. yeah, but it was Sega Genesis. Mm-hmm. And I got that. Mm-hmm. And I was in my early 20s at this point. Yeah. And I remember I got it at one of those rent-to-own places. Okay. Like, a, I don't know, yeah, rent like center or something or like whatever, that. Yeah, something like that, yeah. Rent-a-center. And it was like 380 bucks, but it was only going to be like 12 bucks a week. So I thought, oh, this will be fun. I'll go get this yeah. thing for 12 bucks a week. And I got Madden. I got the first time I ever got Madden. And confused the hell out of me. Because <laughs> <laughs> you'd have A, B, and C for your receivers, and you'd have to, which one is A, B, and C? But yeah. you know, quarterback's getting sacked because you're sitting there going, which <laughs> one is A? <laughs> right. <laughs> right. It's like, yeah. But uh, so one day I got really proficient, I thought, at it. Mm. Well, my youngest brother, the one I mentioned that got the Atari and everything, he could pick up a game, at least at this point, yeah. He'd be the first time he ever played a game, and he'd still he'd kick your ass. Yeah. Well, I got really good at Madden. Mm. So I invite my brother over, hey, play Madden. He goes, I've never played it. I'm like, he goes, you're going to kick my ass. I'm like, I hope. That's the plan. Yeah. He beat me like 42 to 7. <laughs> oh, jeez. He'd never even played it before. I'm like, you bastard. <laughs> <laughs> so did you do, like, how many, how long did you go in the video game thing, and how long did you uh, do that? For? Huge on it throughout my teens. Loved yeah. it, you know. But I, I was also a play outside kind of guy. I mean, I, yeah. I'd. You give me an Atari baseball game, I'd love it. I'd play the crap out of it. But tell me to go outside and play baseball, and I'd much rather do that. I'd like to yeah, that. Yeah. But uh, probably through mid-'90s, probably yeah. when I gave up on it. Yeah. And then, uh, like, in 03, 02, 02 or 03, whatever, Tiger Woods 03 came out. My wife bought me uh, PlayStation. Uh, PlayStation okay. And got me Tiger Woods 03. Mm-hmm. And I can, I don't even play. I still have it. Yeah, and I tried to play it the other day, and I still shoot thirteen under. It's still like way too easy, yeah. and that pissed me off. I wanted it to be harder. Yeah, oh, it you got know? harder. It definitely got harder. Well, as it went along. the graphics got better, and, and yeah. it got. But I just quit. I didn't like it. I wanted to want to play with three, but I just wanted three to be tougher. Mm. <laughs> yeah, I kind of had my time with video games. I, I I was pretty much going every after that. I was addicted, and mm-hmm. I mean, I still played outside all the time, and it was you know th- that was what we did in the evenings was we go and play video games at friends houses or my house or whatever yeah. you know and you couldn't play outside anymore that's what you did mm-hmm. you transitioned into that yeah but i went from the uh atari 2600 to the intellivision and television 2 to um the nintendo well, i forgot that they had intellivision 2 to the did, nintendo to the super then there was the atari 5200 yes which i never got but I friends had, had it I never and had then it. i got the uh what was that one after that 5200 and television 2 there was the uh nintendo nintendo 64 and then the yeah. nintendo the, there was a Nintendo, then the Super Nintendo, yeah. then the Nintendo 64. That's right. Yeah. And I had every single one of those. Yeah. And at some point, whatever, I would, you know, this GameStop kind of came into play. You trade those in, get the new mm-hmm. thing, trade those in, yeah. get the new thing. Yeah. Just imagine if we'd kept all that crap now. Oh, yeah. Be awesome. be worth. Did you ever have the Sega Genesis? I did, yeah. I had yeah, Sega well, Genesis, well, and I had the, uh, the original PlayStation. I killed the original PlayStation the day we got it. I, I had friends that worked at, it was, it was Electronic Boutique at the mm-hmm. time. It was before GameStop. And uh, they had one put aside for me, and I went and got it. Uh, got into this. People were in line. They were pissed because mm-hmm. I walked in with one of the employees, got mine, and walked out. And they were like, <laughs> he was right. like, oh, he works here, he works here. I'm like, I don't work here. Went home, fired it up, and we took the day off of work, and we played for almost 24 hours straight oh, until it was like 3 or 4 in the morning, and it just 
jammed up. It just right. locked up and started smoking. I'm like, oh crap. Uh-oh. My wife was like, ah. <laughs> <laughs> Jeez. Well, I had. I, we were dating at the time. She it was, just thought that was hilarious. That's awesome. It was probably still Nintendo, but Super Tecmo Bowl. There was Tecmo Bowl. Super, yeah, Tecmo Bowl. Yeah. Super Tecmo Bowl. And Tecmo Bowl was the jam. Man. It was. Before Madden and everything came oh, yeah. out. Yeah, it was, it was, I, I, I still to this day would probably rather play Super Tecmo Bowl than uh, Madden. Yeah. And uh, so I had four days off in a row, and I was living with my cousin at the time. And I've always had problems sleeping. You know that. Yeah. So I knew he had a Valium prescription. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> and I said to him, I'm like, man, can I have some Valium? I'm off for four days, man. I just want to sleep for four days. He's like, yeah. there, he gives me four of them. Mm-hmm. And I, but he didn't tell me how many to take or anything. So I took one, started playing Tecmo Bowl. It's like 4.30 in the morning. I'm still up playing Tecmo Bowl. I'm like, yeah. why hasn't that Valium kicked in? That's kind of stupid. So yeah. one that gave me four. Maybe I'm supposed to take two at a time. So I took another one. It's like noon. I'm still playing Tecmo Bowl. Jeez. I take the other two. Oh, no. Oh, no. I stayed up four straight days. I never slept a wink for four fucking days. What the hell? I Because ha- sometimes drugs have the opposite effect on me. Oh, and this was no. almost like I took speed instead of volume. <laughs> I stayed up for four straight days playing Tecmo Bowl. Did you eat <laughs> my at least? Thumb, yeah, <laughs> my, my thumbs were bleeding. Oh, the next day I was trying to write. When I finally had to go back to work, I tried to write something. I couldn't hold a pen. It hurt yeah. so bad from my thumbs playing. Yeah, like used Tecmo. to call that Nintendo thumb. You know, yeah. Nintendo thumb. You just yeah. couldn't do shit because your thumbs were just jammed. <laughs> I had a friend of mine that actually used to play... Uh, and you, this is when you knew he was serious. Uh-huh. He'd put on, he had the little uh, rubber, the little rubber uh, things you'd change pages yeah, yeah, with yeah, and stuff. Yeah, yeah. He'd put that on. And oh, just really? Like, Damn, I wish I'd have thought of that. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, what are you doing? He's like, that's why I don't get Nintendo with them. I'm like, oh, okay, kind right. of a cool idea. <laughs> I went and got one of my mom's thimbles. That didn't work. Right, that didn't work. <laughs> <laughs> just made it hurt worse. <laughs> yeah, I stayed at four straight days on Valium. Wow. On Valium. <laughs> four straight days. <laughs> yeah, so that backfired on me. That backfired bad. on you bad, man. <laughs> that was bad. <laughs> I don't know why sometimes that does that. Yeah. Like I'll, I'll that wrap caffeine myself out. tends to have a, a adverse effect on me, too. I'll, yeah. I, I get, it makes me sleepy. If I drink sometimes it, at night, it does. It just makes me sleepy. Yeah. It used to do that to me. Now I've gotten older and now it keeps me awake. But yeah, in my 20s, I drink coffee at, from six to nine yeah. constantly and yeah. fall right asleep, not have any problem with it. But yeah. Now, if I drink it yesterday, I can't sleep for two, <laughs> two you days. You said you were going to write yourself out about what? Well, I decided not to. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, you decided not to. Okay. Okay. I tried one illegal drug once. <laughs> okay. That is supposed to get you geared up mm-hmm. and get you pumped and mm-hmm. and you're supposed to be on this ultimate high and stuff. Mm-hmm. I mean, I didn't no more do this illegal drug. <laughs> yeah. Within 30 seconds, I'm bawling. <laughs> I mean, I'm crying. Nobody likes me. This life <laughs> sucks, man. Like, this was a long time ago. Yeah, it was right? at a party. Oh yeah, okay. this is our, yeah. I'm in my early twenties. Say that. <laughs> no, and everyone's everyone's around me is like all pumped up on this thing, and I'm like, <laughs> 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 yes. Sometimes it doesn't. Yeah. It does the opposite to me. That's stuff. You got some weird body chemistry. Yeah, That's all it's so. telling you right there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Immediately started crying. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> it was weird. <laughs> Jeez. So I. Never did that again. Mm-hmm. I never did that drug again, ever. I would not, yeah. I would definitely <laughs> put that in the no category. <laughs> Matter of fact, I was at a party a couple of weeks later mm-hmm. with one of the friends that had been at the party where mm-hmm. I did that, and they were breaking the stuff out for everyone to do, and this one, the girl, <laughs> she's like, he doesn't get any of that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and I'm like, no, I don't want any. <laughs> <laughs> He's not fun on that. <laughs> he cries. <laughs> <laughs> like a little girl. I did, man. I was like, <laughs> That's horrible. That's it horrible. Is. Yeah, so Valium and this other thing. No, yeah, no bueno. Yeah, no me. bueno for you. Yeah. yeah. All right. So uh, where can they find us, Randy? We are on iTunes, iHeartRadio, Spreaker, Stitcher, Podcast Land, Podomatic, YouTube, Facebook, and Twitter. I am at Randy Rankin 43 on Twitter, AJF Randy on Instagram. I am at Captain Funky Pants on Twitter and PDR underscore Brandon on Instagram. And don't forget, uh, Perdomo event, uh, meet and greet at Enfuego, May 12th, 2015. Tuesday at Frisco from 10 to 12, Rockwall from 1 to 3.30, and Murphy from 4 to 7. Come meet a legend. Yes, exactly. And we want to thank again Lee at Enfuego for letting us sit here and, and, and wax poetic about whatever BS Silly we decide yeah. to talk about and smoke one of these lovely Perdomos. So check out the uh, Perdomo 2005 Small Batch Series. It's tasty and inexpensive, and it probably will be 
the best cigar you smoked that day. Yeah, it's a good cigar. Yeah, and go to Clips of Cigar Review on Facebook and give us a like there. Yep. And don't forget to comment. We love those comments, guys. Give us Absolutely. those comments. And the audio will be reversed on this for my German for my German friends so you can comment. Exactly. So you can rip us a new one. <laughs> exactly. As always, it's been great smoking with See you. See you later, Brandon. See you later, Randy.